Good morning. I just want to say welcome and thank you for tuning in to our service today. So in this message, we are going to be back in our Bible reading plan for the next couple of weeks. The reason we love and encourage our Bible reading plan, it is a great way to get to know Jesus. It's a great way to learn uh, what Christ did for us. It's a great way to learn his attributes, his character, all these things. But the only way you can do that is by saturating yourself with the word of God. Also, too, before I jump into this message, I just want to encourage you also to jump on with us in a few weeks. We'll be back in our current series that we have entitled Minefield. And in that series, uh, church, our hope and our prayer is to encourage you to reveal to you that there, that we have a real enemy, that his name is Satan. His job is to kill, steal, and destroy but we also, through that message, we want to expose his lies, his tricks, and those things so that we can be aware of them and that we can overcome these things through Christ Jesus. So with that said, let's jump into our message for today. So the message for today I have entitled Tangible God. And we're going to be in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And if you get a chance, I would encourage you to read that entire chapter it is uh, this uh second timothy is an amazing epistle so in this uh message for today many believe that this writing here in second timothy is one of paul's final writings and maybe one of his most personal letters directed to timothy so it is directed to timothy for the purpose to encourage him uh, to persevere to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is directed to Timothy. It is uh, Timothy's Paul's co-worker and child in faith in the gospel. So Paul right here is writing shackled and imprisoned, earned by his persistent desire, his heart's desire to proclaim the good news. Here he's writing under Roman guard, and but to me it's so amazing because I can picture Paul writing with a steady hand to Timothy to come and to visit him. So Paul's repeated imprisonment for the preaching the gospel has earned him this bad reputation. And because of this, many have distanced themselves because of this negative stigma of being his friend. His character and attributes as a prisoner for Christ has had physical consequences on Paul's life. And so if we read scripture, we see that Paul has suffered tremendously for following Christ, even to the point that one day he would lose his life. And we, we know this as we read scripture that Paul loses his life for Christ Jesus. But as Christ tells us, to, li to lose our life is to gain it for the Lord. And so Paul has suffered greatly. He's gone through prison. He's been in prison for Christ and has had these physical, uh, uh, Paul has endured these physical ailments, all these things. But the amazing thing that he knows, that Paul knows that all those things are nothing compared to the eternal rewards that one day he would receive. And it's an encouragement to, to you today that we too will receive great rewards. Scripture says, don't grow weary of doing good things for in due time. Church, in due time you will reap great things from Christ Jesus. Church, I would warn you, though, I want to warn you, I want you to open your eyes to the fact that when we join Jesus Christ on mission, there will be moments that you and I will suffer. Suffering is inevitable when we serve Christ Jesus, but it is nothing compared to what Christ suffered for you and I. And the, the, the cost for our souls was tremendous. It was a great cost that he paid on the cross of Calvary for us. So to be associated with Paul, to be associated with Jesus Christ will put a huge target on your back. So Timothy had come to understand this and he knew that 
uh, he knew this, but he would need this great encouragement to come and visit Paul because at that moment, if he went, he, he, he ran the risk of being imprisoned himself or even killed. So Paul is trying to encourage Timothy, hey, come and visit me, even though there is risk involved. So, as I said earlier, there is great things that we will have to endure for God's sake. Something that Jesus knew on a personal level. He warned us through scripture that this would happen in our lives as Christians. Paul assures us though, and he assures Timothy with a guarantee backed by the very gospel that called us to risk it all. Called Timothy to risk it all. That the risk that we go through is worth the cause. While others may abandon the cause, when others may reject Timothy or reject you, Jesus is always faithful. Let me say that again. Jesus is always faithful. I love what the Word of God tells us. Man, what a beautiful promise and encouragement because Scripture tells us that even when we are not faithful, it does not nullify the faithfulness of God. Church, get that in your mind. Get that in your heart. Put that at the foundation of your life. Christ is always faithful. Christ can empathize with us, church. He knows what it feels like to be abandoned, to be rejected, to be spit upon, to suffer, to be left all alone. That is why his comforting presence is even more tangible. It is even more real in those moments in our lives that, that we are suffering. He is there with us. He walks hand in hand with us. I believe this with all my heart that when we cry, he cries. When we're hurting, he is hurting, church. And it is an awesome lesson for us to learn, church, that we are not alone. We have Jesus Christ with us constantly. One comfort I remind you of is that with all assurance, everything we endure is everything that we will endure, any suffering that we go through is temporary and it has an expiration date. I praise the Lord for that very fact. You know, I rem it reminds me of a movie that I watched and they would say something really interesting. They say they would say that it can't rain all the time, that those storms in life, the way I looked at it is those storms in life have to end. Those moments of suffering will come to the end. We will not constantly be on the valley. One day we'll be at the mountaintop. So I just want to encourage you with those very words today. And, and, and I wrote this down. The proof is in the pudding. What do I mean by that? Is that Jesus' resurrection proves that suffering will end and that our resurrection is coming to and can happen today. Church, I don't know where you're at. I don't know anyone who is watching. I don't know where, where you at are in life, where you are in life, but I'm here to guarantee you that Jesus is the answer. He is the solution. He is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord that protects us, that provides us. He is a God that loves us, that loves you tremendously. He has the power, church. I want you to understand. He has the power to bring life. He is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. He has the power to breathe life into situations, life into your health, life into your finances, life into your relationship. And he has that power to bring life into all those situations that you are currently enduring, those moments that you feel heartache and pain, He is there with you. My hope for you is that you will leave encouraged after this message, that you would walk in faith and in Christ Jesus. I pray that you would resolve, church, to hold on for dear life to the promises and the guarantees that God's Word give us. I remind you that there are times in this life that God's God, the God that we serve will become very tangible. And church, I believe this with all my heart. Those moments that are that God is most tangible in my life is that when I am going through things, because I, I just want to be transparent. I have this tendency to forget to pray. To, 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 to remember what Christ has done when my life is going great. I have this tendency to put Jesus Christ on the back burner. 
you know, I was sharing with the, these brothers the other day that, that God convicted me because uh, I was using Christ uh, in my life kind of like an ointment. When I needed him, I would apply him. When I didn't need him, I would put him back on a shelf. And so just want you to think about these things that we do. So something Paul and Timothy knew well in their life is that they were going to have hardships. But the thing they knew is that God's faithfulness, God's goodness, His mercy, His love far outweighs these things that they may have to endure. He said that all things, he says this in his word, that all things he has come to make brand new. I would ask you today, what encouragement can you receive from this message? In the culture we live in, what are what are the risks for following Jesus Christ? What are challenges uh, uh, that, that you are going through today? What are the challenges for us to be on mission with Christ Jesus and sharing the gospel? Why is following Jesus worth the risk and i ask you this question take a moment to think about where jesus has been most tangible in your life so with that said let's jump into our message number one worth the cost in second timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 13 paul reminds timothy of the grace of god that it is the source of power and a place of comfort in those times that we suffer as Christians for the cause of Christ. You are going to suffer for the cause of Christ. Paul, by personal experience, knows he, Timothy, will need this grace because serving the Lord is not easy. Let's just be honest. It is not easy, and it will require, require every ounce of Timothy's strength, of our strength. But the thing is, church, we have to realize that our strength is not our own. The, our source of strength is Christ Jesus. We must draw from Him. He is the well. That, that's where we have to dip into. That is our source of everything. He is our power source. Paul likens it to a soldier following his commander and his aim is to please his superior. He uses an athlete that is training to compete or he, he even uses a hard working farmer. Every one of these examples speaks to someone that is dedicated to a cause greater than their own. Are you willing, church, to endure challenges and sacrifices for the bigger picture? We started at Abernathy United with this tremendous question, and it is something that I remember today. And the question was this, what aren't you willing to give up for the sake of the gospel? Church, what, what are you willing to put on the line for the sake of Christ Jesus, for sharing Jesus with other people, for taking the gospel to the ends of the earth, to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That question is relevant to us today. The highest of all committed to the cause is Jesus Christ. He was, he is the forerunner. He, he's the one that started all this. Jesus Christ, was willing to endure and to be obedient to the point of death. Think about that for a moment. Hardship is inherent to the Christian life. That is why the resurrection is the source of all Christian hope. Paul calls Timothy and us to remember what God says he will accomplish. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. I love how Paul affirms this, ver this these verses as, tr as a trustworthy saying. And this is what it says. It says, If we have died with Him, we will also live with Him. If we endure, we will also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Because of this, church, Jesus offers us 
hope and acquits, uh, acquits us from the all blame and clears us from our wrongdoing. The foundation of his death and his resurrection. The blessing of this is that it doesn't depend on us, but on him. I exhort you, beloved, that the cause of suffering for Christ is worth it all. Number two, remain steadfast. I love what Jerry Bridges writes on this very thing. Trust is not a passive statement of mind. It is a vigorous act of the soul by which we choose to lay hold on the promise of God and cling to them despite the adversity that at times seeks to overwhelm us. We see countless moments in scripture of God's people enduring suffering, challenges, discomfort, tension, struggles, imprisonment, and even death. Yet in these difficulties and dark times, they knew that they were not alone. They chose to cling on to a tangible God that affirmed his promises and his faithfulness constantly. Imagine that. Christ doesn't have to affirm these things. He doesn't have to constantly remind us, but he does. The evidence and his fingerprints of, of his hands are everywhere in, in our life. If you take a moment, if you take a moment to think of your life, where has God been tangible for you? Where has he been tangible in your marriages, in your finances, in your health? Where is moments that he has protected you, where he has watched over you, where he has kept you from entering a place? Uh, uh, where has God been with you in those moments of, 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 of death or loss or whatever it may be? Where has God been most tangible in your life? God sees you and knows your needs. Remember that. He's looking down on us. He's uh, hearing us. He's saying, hey, these are my people. He loves you tremendously. I love what 2 Chronicles 69 tells us. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless towards him. You have done foolish, foolishly in, in this for from now on you will have wars. But I love what he says that he gives strong support to those whose heart are blameless towards him. It is exhausting, church. We have to grasp this. It is exhausting to try to manage your, your way through this life on your own. We need help. And the, you know, it's, it's, it's like an addict. For him to overcome his addiction, he has to first admit he has a problem. Church, we have to admit that we need help and that only help that can come is through Christ Jesus. We, <clears throat> we say that we trust God, but do you really? I believe with all my heart that words are cheap. Our actions speak louder than our words. And, and the thing is, church, when, when we don't depend on Christ, what we're doing is we're depending on self-reliance. We're depending on self. And you and I know that self has got us nowhere in this life. No wonder we become tired, church, when we're trying to do things in our own strength, in our own power, uh, in our own power, we become tired, we become fearful, frustrated, and many times we feel lonely. We feel like at times that God is not speaking for, uh, to us, that God is not for us, but it is us. It's because we have become dependent on self. God stops being tangible and self becomes that which hinders us from moving forward and having victory in Christ Jesus. We must remain unmoved in our choices to pick God. For we have witnessed his faithfulness. We must look back for hindsight is 2020. Church, if you take a moment today and you look back on your life, you will see the evidence of Christ everywhere. Many people say, well, that was chance. It was, it was, uh, it was by chance. No, God does not operate in chance. He operates in absolutes. Clarity is brought forth in recognizing that God remains and, and will always be 
faithful. Church, get that in your mind and your heart today that God is always faithful. It is woven. It is threaded through every fabric of Scripture and in our personal lives. Let us not toss aside this great reward. We know that when we know that we know that we know with all confidence this fact, as Hebrews 10, 35 to 36 states. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you will you may receive the promise. Paul reminds Timothy at the last that the reason to remain faithful is that his life is not his and that it should be used to glorify God. It is the higher calling that beckons us to follow Jesus Christ no matter the risk or the sacrifices we make. So church, I pray that this message here has been a blessing to you. But let me pray for you. Let me encourage you in this. Church, in my life, I've gone through many things. But the amazing thing is that I sit here today and I can tell you confidently that Christ never left me. He never abandoned me. He was there every moment of my life. And today, with all my heart, all my mind, and my soul, tells you this. No matter what I've endured, Christ endured more and more greatly. But the thing is because he loved me and he chose to do all those things so that he could save me for myself. So let me pray for you this morning. I want to encourage you before I jump into this prayer is that if you don't know Christ Jesus today, today that can be remedied. Scripture says that all we have to do is believe with action, believe with action. You know, Christ tells us in Romans uh, 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth and your heart you believe, you believe into salvation. We must believe the entirety of the gospel that Christ came, born through a virgin, lived a perfect, uh, uh, sinless life. He died on the cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And on the third day, he arose. And today he's seated at the right hand of the Father victory. If you believe that with all your heart and you confess Him as your Lord and Savior, today your na name will be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let me pray for you. So Father God, I pray this morning that you would forgive us for forgetting to remember and to live like you are a God that is faithful. Especially in those moments that we are overwhelmed that push us to the limits of our faith in you. Father, remind us, Father, remind us, encourage us constantly and daily to see you, to hear you, to rely on you, to, to know that you are our source of life. Father God, you are a God that brings life. You're the one and only true God. Lord, you have the power to resurrect our relationships, our homes, our marriages, our children, our finances. Lord, you have the power to restore health. Lord, let us never forget the great price that you paid to purchase our souls. Help us to commit to the mission of sharing the gospel and to share with others the hope found in you. Let us share that uh, let us share that it is the only thing that saves us. It is your death and your resurrection. Father God, I pray that we will experience you constantly in a tangible and real way. That you're a, a, a awesome and amazing God. That you are constantly there for us. Father God, help us to remain steadfast and to cling on to the assurance that is in you. And that we are truly safe in your arms. Uh, the, your arms that protect us, that love us, that keep us. Lord, if anything should encourage us to endure suffering, to endure hardship, is the sacrifice that you made for you and I. Uh, for you, for uh, the sacrifice that you made for us, Lord. I pray that, that we would realize this, that we would remember this. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, God bless you. I pray that you have a great week. Bye-bye.